Happy Friday. Welcome back to Kevin Toll Reads. Today I have a book review, book number two in the Wayward Pines trilogy, Wayward by Blake Crouch, published in 2013. This is a sci-fi mystery thriller. In this book, we get to see the continuation of the story from book one. We now have Ethan after he is aware of what's gone down with Wayward Pines and how he got there and the mysterious nature and that happens or in around book one. Um, Ethan is thrust into a new role with, in, in Wayward Pines, and he becomes the sheriff after what happens in book one with Pope. And so Pilcher uses Ethan, you know, as a kind of his middleman to keep a pulse on what's going on in Wayward Pines, which was Pope's previous role as the sheriff there. Um, Pilcher is definitely concerned because he has a feeling that there are citizens in Wayward Pines that are aware of what's going on and they've started to rise up and are creating kind of a resistance or a coup and he wants Ethan to kind of uh, infiltrate them and figure out what's going on so he can keep his thumb and his godlike complex upon his town and there's definitely different pieces and bits during the story that you can tell Crouch was wanting to give you the sense of feeling that Pilcher is not this humanitarian type guy, that he's more of a controlling and godlike, or thinks he's a godlike figure. And it comes across in the story in a couple places. In, ter in terms of what I liked about this story, I definitely thought it was really good. You know, a lot of the negative feedback online about this and I went and researched some of it before this review because, again, this is a reread for me of this trilogy. But a lot of the negativity or the perceived negativity around what they don't like about book two is when you have a big reveal in book one like we did, book two is, like, okay, well, now the cat's out of the bag. How do you continue the story? And I think they do a good job here because once the reveal happens in book one, book two starts and people assume new roles you have Ethan and his wife, Teresa, is she going to accept the, you know, this is the way it's got to be type thing. You know, there's nothing else out there, so to speak. And his son, Ben, you know, how is that going to affect him? You know, they've been integrated before Ethan was integrated. And so, yeah, like they're not going to play house, so to speak. Real just drop everything and do it. And so there's definitely that little bit of resistance there and they're trying to feel that way their way out obviously Teresa is having issues with it she doesn't like the fact that it's just they they everything feels fake there's cameras everywhere you know nothing's private so to speak and so that really bothers her and Ethan has a lot that's on his shoulders and you can sense this in this book he's trying to satisfy his what he wants and having a family but at the same time he has this role for Pilcher and he's trying to figure that out. Plus, he's trying to deal with Kate, who was a ex-Secret Service agent and his ex-lover. So how do we deal with all of that? Um, there's also the interesting dynamic of Pilcher's daughter. And she was kind of a person that Pilcher used to infiltrate the town and what ended up happening to her. And that was an interesting twist. I really enjoyed in book two also the flashbacks. So, again, like, how do you continue the story? How do you make it three books when you let the cat out of the bag in book one? Well, you definitely need the resistance. People need to stand up and like, this isn't right. We're just not going to sit around and take it, that this is our lives now. But I also like the fact that we get a flashback and backstory on key characters. You have Pilcher, that backstory. I thought that was really interesting and dynamic. You have uh, the backstory with... Adam uh, Hassler, who is Tobias, and you have, and was Ethan's boss, and then you have the flashback with Pam, that was interesting Well, as well, she, her younger self and how Pilcher meets her, and she's just, she, Pam's just not a nice person, and she's very psychotic, and you can definitely tell that, that that's being built up as well, her personality, and so Anyways, I really enjoyed a lot with this book. The pacing is just really phenomenal. I mean, he does a great job with keeping this moving along. I'm ripping through these. I'm already halfway through book three. Um, and, and I don't feel like I'm just getting it done type thing. I'm just enjoying it. So 
it's definitely why I wanted to reread these. In terms of excerpts, there's nothing that really stands out, but there was something that caught my attention. At one point, um, when Ethan was going around the town and was trying to drop a, 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 a anonymous note to Kate, Kate was in one of the, I think it was a coffee shop or whatever, and Crouch writes in, in that scene that she was reading a Lee Child Reacher novel, which I thought was pretty funny. And so, anyways, in terms of scores, I give this a 4.2 out of 5. I definitely think it's not as good as book one, but it definitely is good. And it kept me entertained, and it was fast read, and I definitely, it sets up ultimately for a great book three. And so I... Uh, that's my review. I hope you're having a great Friday and, uh, be on the lookout of the weekend and I will probably have book three to review as well. So it's been a great week for videos. I've been pumping them out and enjoying some great reads and it's been kind of crappy weather. So it's been good to get, be productive. So I hope you're having a great Friday, great kickoff into your weekend and I will talk to you later. Thanks.